In this video we're going to be covering uh, pinion height and shimming it up to the correct height. However, I think we caught a bit of a crab. This is confusing, isn't it? So this little gauge here is working out really nice. I like this one. Look at that, you could make that yourself. I put two little black marks on there to correspond to left and right so it's easy to change. The height's perfect. Look at that. Now, the confusing thing about this is, and something that's really throwing me off, is in the book it states um, the nominal height should be 30.93. Um, All right, that would be zero. I'm actually two thousandths of an inch. Just for a minute. Oh, well, I'll tell you something. It's about it's about a thousandth of an inch. It's close enough for Lander over there. Worked to the nearest inch. So, but the the pinion's really throwing me off. Because it's not marked on the end, why has it got minus two on the shaft? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. It states quite clearly that the end should be marked, but it isn't. So I really don't know what to think. So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, I'm going to now check the backlash and arrange the shimming for the differential. We already worked out the float so we've got that measurement up here but now with the pinion in we're going to me measure the back shaft, backlash and we'll work out what shim has to go in where. Now once we've done that then we can drop the whole unit in with the correct shims and then we can put some of our marking, I, I bet I have a our marking yellow stuff and check the pattern of the teeth. That's the only way we really got to get it absolutely spot on. If we're a couple of thousandths off, I don't think it'll end the world, but well, we'll see. So I think what I'll do is leave this dummy bearing in, set the diff in and check the teeth. And we'll see that on another video because this has dragged on a little bit. Now I've just put the uh, differential back in with the dummy bearings so it, it is free to move but this time it's moving against the pinion it's blocked against the pinion and this is where we get to do our little bit of mathematics but if you want to see my video of how I did the, uh, the, the crown wheel then I'll put that here and we'll end this video because it must be running true alright so Let's have a look at that video and then we'll come back. Before we fit the crown wheel, we're going to get an oil stone. And go around the, the wheel to make sure there's no high spots in it. Because I have noticed there's quite a bit of Loctite kicking around. And this uh, has to run as true as possible. So we'll clean that off, but interestingly enough, um, where was it now? Here is the matching number to the pinion. I'll just make sure you've got that. So I'm going to clean that up, we're going to start to put it on. Having the differential in the vise really helps because we're going to start to torque them down. We'll get some thread lock on there. We're just going to slowly pull these down two diagonally opposite ones. Right, we don't want too much because we're going to torque them down. And when we torque them down, we're going to put some marker on the bolts because there is quite a lot and you don't want to miss one. So it's uh, 58 newton metres and of course my gauge has gone to sleep so I'm going to wake him up. Done. 
and then we'll go around them in a, a diagonal pattern and do them all again. And then we're going to drop this into the, then we're going to drop this assembly into here. By doing it like that we should be able to just drop this in, just. Fingers, watch your bloody fingers. Kareng. So you can see I've got a, a dial gauge this time, so you can probably see. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit more. The, the diff is free running. Uh, I can set this to zero because I can. If this gauge would allow me to. And now we're going to just spin this. See if there's any deviation. There might be odd spots because it doesn't, you know, like it's been dropped and banged around a little bit. But it's not going all over the place, so it's pretty, it's pretty good. Right, so we're uh, just going to wind that bolt down with the fancy lights on. I'm going to move this differential all the way to this side. So, is that clear? Like that. See how it jumped? The bearings jumped in there now, so what we can do now Pinch that one down, and this one's going to be a little bit tricky, so we've got to get into here, push that bearing back in. We should be able to do it with a screwdriver. And make sure that that bearing is nice and tight. Just here, can't quite see it. Because we don't want to push this against the crown against the pinion. And you see there's a little bit of space in there. We should be able to move this crown wheel backwards and forwards like that look. But this time we're hitting the pinion. This is a good thing because once we put on here to get our backlash we can work all this lot out. Now I'm going to put this down again. I'm going to set up some gauges. Right this is going to be tricky to see but I've got this gauge here for the backlash going this way and I've got this gauge here measuring the depth going this way. So what we're going to do first of all is push the differential over to this side like that and zero it. Right, that's zero. And then we should have an awful lot of backlash on here. Moving. So we're going to push this up to there, we're going to set that on zero. Next, we're going to look for backlash and we'll turn this a little bit so you can perhaps see our backlash going on here. That's our backlash, you near it? We don't want to turn the pinion. We might have to tighten up that pinion just a little bit more because it's a little bit loose. We don't want to test the backlash on here. We want to test the backlash on here. That's the important thing. So we've got this here at zero. Oh, it's dropped off again. Uh... 
that's on zero. That's six point uh, point zero six five. So we want ten thou backlash. So we're going to set this. So now the crown wheel is touching the pinion. We're going to set our gauge to zero. Now we want about they say book in the book ten thousandth. It's actually oh what is it now six to eleven. So we're just going to move this a little bit, just a hair. Oh, I think it's a bit too loose, I need something to hold that. I wonder if we could do it this way and show you uh, what I'm actually doing this way. Yeah, now we can see that. Now we can see the backlash by nipping up the, prim uh, the, the pinion a little bit. We can see if we put this onto zero. We've got eight. We've got eight, and this is at fifty nine point five. So if we want that a little bit tighter. All we have to do is just delicately tap this over. See that's 51. See that's moved up to 14. So we want to go this way a little bit. Just a bit tighter. Too tight. Notice the, the gauge here. It goes to 62 very quickly. 51. Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven gives us nine. Fifty-nine gives us eight. So what we want now, so I'm going to stick with that 59. This is why it gets, it gets a bit confusing. This, this is my maths. Uh, the total end float was 0 0.093 inches. We have to add uh, five thousandths of an inch onto that for preload. That's the crush onto the new bearings. So those two numbers added together is 0 0.98. Correct? So that's that's the space plus five thousandth of an inch preload. Next we take we get the point zero uh, zero point zero five nine here. We take that off there and we end up with zero point zero three nine. Now this is important. So our point five nine shim goes in here and the point zero three nine shim goes in here. And that will give it preload, but with end float. Does it, does it make sense? It does work. It really does work. We'll prove that tomorrow, because I've had enough of it. <laughs> I'm going for a long, relaxing sherry. But in order to keep, keep that uh, preload we've got there, that's beautiful. That's all we want. We're going to have to keep that tight, but in a right position. It'll work it out tomorrow. So all we've got to do now is go through our shim sets and work out 0 0.59. Well, it's close enough to, to 6, look. So we, what we could actually do was, I think there's some shims here. Ooh, look at that. 
0.003. So if we, put, we, if we were to put two of these shims in tomorrow, and then on, on the other side we want point, wait a minute, five nine, yeah. And this is, these are three. So if we got one of these on the other side plus nine, we should be absolutely on the money, which be, we should be because, if I look right, we've got three shims, we could take three shims out of these 0 0.003 and that should be absolutely blob on the money. But I've had enough for today, so I'm going to, I'm going.